Hi guys, welcome back to my channel 32 Happy Teeth. Today we're going to study Korn syndrome. So let's get started. Hyperaldosteronism is of two types, primary and secondary. Primary hyperaldosteronism is mainly due to two reasons. First, bilateral adrenal hyperplasia and the other is unilateral adenoma which is also called as the Korn syndrome. Bilateral adrenal hyperplasia can occur in any age group and it is equally incident in male as well as female. It involves both the adrenal gland but the involvement of both the adrenal gland may not be symmetrical. Moving on to the unilateral adenoma or the Korn syndrome, in this particular uh, cause there is increased aldosterone and then there will be increased salt and water retention. Of course, if the aldosterone will increase, it will lead to reabsorption of salt and water and there will be more and more loss of potassium, hence leading to hypokalemia. If water and salt are increasing in our body, it will lead to increase in blood pressure and because aldosterone is increasing, there will be loss of H+, which will lead to alkalosis. Even after the retention of salt and water in our body, there won't be any edema. Why is it so? Because if the salt and water is retaining, then there will be increase in intravascular volume, which in turn will increase the preload. And if the preload increases, it will stretch the heart atrium. And when these heart atrial walls are stretched, they will release ANF. And this ANF in turn will lead to excretion of sodium, leading to no edema. Korn syndrome can be presented as hypokalemia or hypertension. If it presents as hypokalemia, there will be episodic muscle weakness. Hypokalemia can be associated with both acidosis as well as alkalosis. If the patient has alkalosis and hypokalemia, then we check the blood pressure of the patient. And if the blood pressure is also high, then the patient is said to have the Korn syndrome. If it is presented as hypertension, it will usually be present in young patients and his or her hypertension won't be controlled by drugs. This hypertension will be so severe that it will damage organs. What are the other syndrome other than Korn syndrome which can be seen in these conditions? It is Liddell syndrome, pheochromocytoma and Cushing disease. Now moving on to the screening part. For screening what you should do? The drugs which has been prescribed to the patient such as spironolactone or diuretics which are given to him or her, you should stop the drug 6 weeks before screening. After 6 weeks when you call the patient, you should check the plasma aldosterone level. If the aldosterone level is more than 10 mg per deciliter and if the renin is decreased, decreased to less than 1 mg per deciliter, then the patient is said to have Korn syndrome. What should we do for confirming Korn syndrome? For this, we have to do saline infusion test. And how do we perform this test? We infuse 2 liter NS in 4 hours. And after 4 hours, if the aldosterone level increases, then Korn syndrome is confirmed. For imaging, we should go for CT abdomen. Now coming to the treatment. For the treatment of Korn syndrome, if the adrenal gland uh, disease which is Korn syndrome is caused by adenoma which is unilateral adenoma then we should go for surgery but if it is because of the bilateral adrenal hyperplasia then we should prescribe drugs such as spironolactone and epleronone. So this was all about Korn syndrome. I hope you like this video and if you do so please hit the like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever I post a new video, you'll get a notification. This video will be available on my telegram channel in the form of PPT by the same name 32 Happy Teeth. I will provide the link of all the concerned groups in the description box so don't forget to check the description box. If you have any doubt regarding this topic, feel free to comment in the comment section. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye.